I'm Luke Hatfield. You join me alongside none other than West Brom, West Brom correspondent Joe Massey. Joe, uh, you're in Brighton, you're in your car. Um, normally, I'd start with the game after a game, but uh, I tell you what, there's some worrying noises coming out of Albion at the moment, and, and particularly Slavin Bilic, who's, who's expressed his disappointment of uh, obviously the exit of Ahmed Aghazi. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is the only place to start. It has been a crazy day. It's been a crazy um, four days, uh, I suppose, really, when you look at it all. When you take it as all sort of like one big story, when you think that obviously we spoke to Slavin Bilic, sort of his pre-Brighton presser was on Thursday. Um, there'd been talk then of interest in Ahmed Aghazi from Saudi Arabia. Bilic was asked about it at that press conference on Thursday and, and we've all read his answers and all know his answers. He was categor- categorically said that Ahmed Aghazi was going nowhere, that he, he saw him as a big part of his squad, big part of his plans. Um, and he expected him to play a big part for the rest of the season, especially after that performance against Burnley last Monday when Albion obviously kept their first clean sheet back in the Premier League. So it was sort of those whispers then after that on Sunday, sort of early spe- uh, speculation earlier in the day that, that an actual move had materialised for Aghazi to Saudi. And then look, it, 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 and that, that was it. Before we knew it, he was gone. Um, the line, from, very much out from what we understand, Albion, the deal's worth about £10 million for Albion, that sort of... Agassi was on £70 grand a week. Um, that is my understanding. That was what his wages went up to um, following promotion to the Premier League. £3.6 million a year. Had a two-year contract, so that's sort of a region of £7.2 million. And we understand, Expression Star understands, that the deal in total was worth about £10 million to Albion. So we're looking at a fee of around £3 million, £2.8 million, um, that um, Aleti had of paid to land Aghazi. And, Al- and Albion's board have accept- obviously accepted that. And I think there's no other way to say it other than they, they accepted it behind Bilic's back. I don't think you can say it any other way. He he was not happy about it. He, he He's just made it abundantly clear in his press conference that even on Saturday, um, Ahmed Aghazi was starting this game. The whole week, in football, all you do in training all week is build up to the next game. That mm. is all you do. And for the past... Seven days, if you like, for for five days from last Monday, Burnley to Saturday, Albion were working towards this Brighton game, and they were working with it with Ahmed Aghazi in the start in eleven. Not only in the squad, in the start in eleven. Um, so Bidget Bilic is he's 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 very 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 frustrated um, that he was sold on Sunday. Reports came out today, sort of as I was travelling down, um, that he was sort of. His future was in doubt. It didn't. It, it, slightly vague reports didn't say whether Bilic was considering his future or if Albion were considering his future. I mean, you obviously would, you, Bilic is the one that's sort of angry. So obviously, it would be mm. Bilic who was who was considering his future. But I asked him about that str- st- as frank as you could be. Really, I, I said to Sla- Slavin, "Can you assure fr- fans? Um, fans are concerned. Can you assure fans you will be staying?" Um, and if we're being honest, he didn't answer the question. He, he, mm-hmm. carried, he carried on talking about Ahmed Aghazi and how disappointed he was um, to see him leave. So, look, I don't think Southern Bilic is going anywhere. I've got to be honest. I think he is staying. I think he wants to see this project through. I think he's he's got a very close bond with this group of players. I think he wants to see them over the line see how, and in, help them in, achieve Premier League survival. That is my gut. That is what I feel. I do genuinely believe he wants to stay. Um but there is no doubt about it that the last 48 hours, um, there has been, you'd have to say, a breakdown in relations with between mm-hmm. Bilic and Albion's board. He's he's very, very frustrated by the sale of Aghazi. Um, I think, in general, he's quite frustrated with the window as a whole. I mean, we've said time and time again, Albion have done incredibly well, really, with the players they've brought in for £20 million. But they have only spent £20 million. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, it's pennies, really, in, in the grand scheme of things. And... Bilic has got every right in one in one sense to be disappointed with that. Look, it's an ownership issue. It's a gouch and lie issue. It's not a board issue. It's a gouch and lie issue and an ownership issue where the owner isn't putting money into the club. So I think it's important to make that clarification. But of course, Bilic wants more money. Of course, everyone else has spent vast sums of money. Look at Leeds. They've spent an absolute fortune since coming up. So you can understand why Bilic was frustrated anyway. But this Agazi departure has, it has left him sort of visibly... Um, he kept using the word disappointed and he was he was actually asked if he's angry um, and he sort of said shrugged it off and he was like angry disappointed what what difference does it make really um, and he's got a, a, like a 
obviously a very valid point with that. But you can just tell he is. I think we'll, the word we'll use is is frustrated um, um, and, and 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 aggrieved. He he is annoyed um, that. A, he, the guards is gone, and B, he was so adamant that he was staying on Thursday. So he, he he really is frustrated that he's gone. It's worrying as well, isn't it? Because you look at Albion and the season, you know, so far they're still to register that that first Premier League win. There were very there were some positive signs today, particularly second half. But if 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 this breaks down and Bilic ends up, if, if Bilic either ends up, walk, I'm not saying he's going to, but if he ends up walking, or if Albion say, look, this isn't working. All of a sudden, the season's gone from one which has had a slow start to one where it looks like Albion could be could be in real trouble. Yeah, it's difficult as we sit here now, based on what we know from what's happened and Billich's demeanour. Has to be said in the in the press conference we've just had, but it's important not to get carried away. I, 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 like I just said, I generally don't think Billich is going anywhere. I do think he will stay. I do think he'll see it through. Um, I mean, look, Albion will be. It, I can't see how Albion they'd be absolutely mad to sack him. In my opinion, mm. in my opinion, Albion's best chance of survival is with Slaven Bilic at the helm. Which I believe that. Um, could he walk? Look, the truth is, I don't think he. Like I've said, I really, really don't think he could. He will walk. Um, mm. That said, because well, no, the truth is, no managers walk in this day and age, do they? They all wait to be sacked and they all wait for their payout. The one thing with Bilic is he is. A passionate guy, he's 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 got his morals, and if anyone could quit, it could be him, in my opinion. Just as as a, look, I don't know him really, but just as a, from what from the from what I get from that sort of that little bit of access I do get from him, mm. he, look, Kevin Keegan quit for England, didn't he? Famously quit in the dressing room because after that one 0 loss to Germany in the last game at Wembley, and I admire Kevin Keegan so much for that, bizarrely, because everyone man, everyone else would wait for the payoff. And I do think that Bilic has got that sort of character that he would he would he would be willing to sort of st- stick to his guns, if you like. But I, I really, really, really don't think he will. I think he, it's his, this is his team. You have to remember that this is his team. He's brought them an, a hell of a long way. Um, promoted a year ahead of schedule. Look, in the end, they had mm. to go up. We all know about that because of coronavirus. They had to go up. Um, once football resumed um, following the break. But he did get them up 12 months in advance. Um, so it's his team. They're his players. Look, they love him. The players love him. There's no doubt about that. So I think he will stay. And, and, and I, honestly, I truly hope he will. Fingers crossed that's the case. Joe, anyway, I mean, today, let's talk about the game. First half for me, um, really poor. Didn't look great at all, Albion, I don't think. Brian really did... Uh, dominate that first half, but it was a real Jekyll and Hyde performance, wasn't it? Because second half, Albion bossed it. Uh, yeah, I disagree. Actually, uh, I don't think it was Jekyll and Hyde. I, I think um, I think for twenty minutes, Albion were actually good. You know, um, I thought the first twenty minutes of the game was very, very even. Um, I thought very, very little in it, um, and sort of both both teams sort of had their moments, got into a few dangerous areas, and I'll be honest, I didn't. For, for the next 25 minutes of the first half, Brighton did dominate. Um, mm. And I didn't quite see that coming at the time. I thought Albion actually started the game quite well. and But they did. It, it, there was sort of this one moment where um, Mopai was... Yeah, I mean, he, he looked destined to score. A lovely little bit of play. I think they broke free on free, Brighton. And Lalana played mm. this ball to Mopai. And it's a fantastic save from Sam Johnston. It really, really is on his 100th appearance from Albion. Um, for Albion, he's he's had an absolutely fantastic start to the campaign, and it was sort of that from that moment, Brighton really sort of got in their stride, and and they and they took charge really, and they did dominate for the rest of the half. Um, and a couple of efforts from distance got into some dangerous areas, um, and they deservedly sort of went ahead for a Jake Livermore own goal, which was just. Really, really unfortunate. There's nothing, yeah. nothing anyone can redo really about that. It was just one of them. It, it, well, it, it was one of those things that goes against you when you're in a relegation battle. To be honest, mm. um, and Albion, I've said it a million times, they've not had a lot of luck in these opening six games, and that was another moment where, like, the, the cards just didn't didn't fall for them really. Um, but you couldn't argue with it. You couldn't argue that Brighton were were ahead at the break after that sort of 25 minute spell they had, um, and then Albion came out from for the second half, and they were they. They, they, it was that, that was then chalk and cheese. So they, they, they started. They were much more aggressive. They got into. They, they continued to get in dangerous areas, but they, the, the final ball was a lot better. They were a lot more sort of. They looked a lot more threatening. Um, mm. 
um, Mateus Pereira has had a good two or three chances, um, yeah. one of which clipped the post. I think I think Pereira will come away today very disappointed he didn't take one of those chances um, that's fallen his way. They're all from distance, but they're all efforts that he should have hit the target with. Um, and then, yeah, finally Albion did pull level um, through Carl and Grant. Fantastic goal for him. Showed what he was all about, really. Um mm ball into the box strong he was really strong he sort of held off his marker he was willing to sort of wait at wait and take an extra touch because he knew he had the strength to hold off a defender and then he just he, he fired it in from sort of 10 yards I think it was but really good goal from him um, and a deserved point if the game had gone on 10 minutes longer I think Albion would have won it yeah. um they, they they were really good in that second half um and it's a difficult one because on Brighton definitely deserved the lead at the break Albion certainly deserved to be level by the end of it, I think you can you can make a case they probably they, they should have taken all three points maybe, but you yeah. probably have to say that overall a fair a draw was a fair result. But it's definitely Albion that will be more disappointed coming away from it. Yeah, and a lot of fans who um, kind of shared their thoughts after the game, they're just desperate to see a, a ninety minute performance from this side because they've they've shown Albion you know whether it be a half, whether it be you know twenty minutes that they're, they're capable of playing at this level when they're clicking. It's just a matter of making sure that happens and, and it's, it's an entire game, isn't it? And that's, and that's, do you know what? That's the one thing Bilic says pretty much at every pre-match press conference. He said it again on Thursday. Um, I mean, I could go on all day in this video, but I mean, you look at every the six games so far. Leicester, Albion were good. Mm. They, were, they, were, they were defensively solid at, least, at worst for the opening 45 minutes of that game. And they restricted Leicester to very little by long distance efforts. And then couple of lapses of concentration in the second half. One, they switched off for the, for the opening goal and a couple of poor penalties, really. Um, handed last to the win. Everton, I mean, Albion were sensational in the first half. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it, Kieran Gibbs, moment of madness, cost them, that cost them really he, like heavily that day. Chelsea, we all know what happened there. 3-0 up at half-time. 3-0 um, three, three defeat. And then... The one blot on the copybook is Southampton, you'd have to say. Um, mm. poor, from, poor from start to finish, if we're being honest. Um, Southampton were, were the better, better, better side that day, thoroughly deserved the points. Burnley last week, um, obviously Burnley had a couple of spells where Chris Wood hit the woodwork and um, Ashley Barnes made a good save from Sam Johnston. But yeah, Albion had the chances to win it. That fantastic save from Nick Pope. And then tonight, yeah, 40, just... 20 minutes of nothingness tonight, I think it was really. 20 minutes of two teams completely sort of even each other out. Very mm. sort of um, even. 25 minutes where Brighton were dominant, much better time team. And then for 45 minutes, Albion were the better team um, in that second half. So, Billich says that just stretching these performances out uh, over 90 minutes is what they're aiming for. Um, but look, it's easier said than done because there's a hell of a lot of quality in this team. And you've got to remember that I think a lot of people sometimes forget that the opposition are always working for a full week to beat you. Sometimes you just think that you're just going to turn up and like, and you can you just should be able to play your game. But it's never that simple. And and obviously there's some fantastic teams in the Premier League, so it's going to be hard to string performances out for 90 minutes. But if Albion can start hitting that 60, 70 minute bracket um, soon, um, then obviously they're going to have a much more chance, much better chance of winning games. But just final thing. On that, I think you do have to say that Albion have improved in every single game um, mm. as they've gone on, and that's been the case all the way, and continues tonight. Really, I think that continues again tonight. Obviously, you have to take Southampton out of that, but Albion are getting better. That win is coming. That win is coming. Will it? Will it come in the the big game coming up, Joe? I suppose that's a, the last thing we're going to discuss because I know this video has gone on. Uh, big old game in the Premier League next, isn't it? It's yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Um, yeah, I mean, look, will it come in that? Will it come at Fulham on Monday? I hope so. Uh, I like to think it will. They've got every chance, of course. So, uh, look, it's going to be a big game for both sides, isn't it? It's too, it? Forget the starts of the season. The truth is, what doesn't change is Albion and Fulham were in the Championship last season. Mm. Simple as. So, when you come up and you play a side that were in the Championship last season with you, you know it's a massive chance to get some points on the board. You know it is. I think next week is going to be quite cagey, if I'm honest, quite nervy. Um, mm. There'll be a lot of pressure on both sides. A bit more on Fulham, because um, they're at home. Not that that really matters at this moment in time, but but it will be. there will be more pressure on them. Um, 
So look, it's a huge game. Fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed that, that will be the day. Um, Albion get their first wins. Three draws, isn't it, from from six games um, so far in the Premier League. The, the, that elusive first win is what everyone wants. But Albion are showing they've got something about them. Um, they are showing they've got something about them. But yeah, I, I agree. As soon as once that first win comes, I think everyone will just breathe a little bit easier. Yeah, fingers crossed they can get it soon. Right, that's us for today. You know where to go for all your Albion news. Expressandstar.com.